Hey, this is Chris. Hope you're doing well and welcome to Popcorn Finance, the show where we discuss finance and about the time it takes to make a bag of popcorn. You know, I've really been enjoying answering your questions here on the podcast, so I thought I'd take another question that came in via email. And just in case you didn't know, you can always send me a question via email by just emailing me at questions at popcornfinance.com. So let's jump into this week's email. It came in from Nicole. Nicole wrote, Hi, I am contributing to my employer-sponsored Roth 401k and have set up my own IRA. I know there are contribution maximums for these types of accounts, but I'm not sure how they differ. Are these two different types of accounts with separate contribution maximums, or do I have to consider them together? Thanks. Well, thanks, Nicole, for writing in, and this is a great question, and one I don't think I've answered before here on the podcast. I did actually cover 401ks in depth back in episode 203 when I went back and did a little bit of research to see what I've actually talked about here on the podcast, but I've never compared an IRA to a 401k. So I'm going to just expand on Nicole's question here and do just a deeper dive in general into these two accounts. So I think the best way to start is just what are these accounts, IRAs, 401ks, what what are these things about? So these are special accounts that are designed specifically for retirement. There are actually accounts called brokerage accounts, which I'm sure you've probably heard me mention here before on the podcast. And these brokerage accounts are made for holding the investments that you buy. But all activity in these accounts are subject to tax. So, for example, if you bought a stock for $100 and then you sold it for $120 next year, that $20 in profit that you made, that is subject to tax. But with plans like 401ks, and when I I say 401ks throughout this episode, I'm also including 457 plans, 403bs, they all work pretty similar to each other. So these 401k plans and IRAs, their main benefit is that they help shield your money from taxation. So since I'm already talking about the similarities between these plans, let's just go through all the things that are similar between 401ks and IRAs. So as I mentioned, special tax treatment. There are two big categories for IRAs and 401ks. There's your traditional and there's your Roth. Whichever option you choose, they have special tax benefits that allow you to forego paying some type of tax. With the traditional version of these plans, you get tax savings right up front. You get to put money into the plan and that money you put in gets to be excluded from your tax returns and you get a nice tax savings right up front, but you will pay taxes on that money when you pull it out. With a Roth version of a 401k or IRA, you pay taxes right now. So whatever money you put in, you've already been assessed taxes in that year. But the great benefit is when you pull that money out, you'll pay no taxes at all. So there's this really nice tax incentive for using these types of plans. The other thing that's similar between these two types of retirement accounts is that you need to have income in order to contribute to these plans. So this is one of the main reasons that like your, you know, your 10 year old can't open up an IRA and contribute money into the plan in most cases because they don't have a job. So you can't just give them money and they put it into the plan. That's not how it works. The IRS requires that the money that goes into these plans is from earned income and would be something that you would potentially report on a tax return. And the last similarity that I'll jump into here is that there are limits on when you can withdraw money from both of these plans. Uh, These plans are intended for retirement. So when you're older. And so for that reason, they put a cap on when you can pull that money out penalty free. So with either an IRA or 401k, if you decide to pull out money before you turn 59 and a half, you'll be subject to a 10 percent penalty. And there are ways to get around this. Uh, We don't really have time to dive into it in this episode, but let me know. Send me an email if you want me to dive more into the penalty exceptions that exist out there for these plans. But with these plans, you need to be older than 59 and a half in order to take that money out penalty free. So those are some of the major similarities between an IRA and a 401k. After a quick break, I'm going to dive into some of the differences and get into some of the specifics of the question that Nicole sent in. I know it's hard to believe, but it's that time of year again. Time to get ready for tax season. And look, if me just saying that takes your anxiety to 11, no, you aren't alone. There are a few things that I truly hate more than doing my own taxes. But that's when I reach out for help. H&R Block is not only bringing you today's bag of popcorn, but they're also bringing you the help you need this tax season. H&R Block's experienced tax pros have an average of 10 years of experience to help you navigate our complex tax system. Plus, H&R Block guarantees your maximum refund and 100% accuracy. You can get things started however works best for you. You can visit an office and meet with a tax pro face-to-face, connect virtually via phone, video, or chat, or a hybrid of the two. With or without the office visit, H&R Block Tax Pros can help you get your taxes done. So to learn more and get the tax help you need, 
click the link in the show notes or head to popcornfinance.com slash HR block for 20% off your online filing. Again, that's popcornfinance.com slash HR block or go to the link in the show notes for 20% off your online filing. Okay, so what makes an IRA different from a 401k? A 401k is considered a work-sponsored plan, meaning that you need to have an employer who's established one of these retirement accounts in order for you to participate. Versus with an IRA, an individual retirement account, this can be opened up by anyone. You can do it at any time, any place you choose. And because it's not tied to an employer, you can use the same account regardless of who you work for or how many times you change jobs. You can change jobs 20 times and just keep that same IRA with you. But with the 401k, you can only contribute to those plans using money that's withheld from your paycheck. So this means if you change jobs, you're no longer eligible to contribute to that 401k plan. It'll just sit there with whatever money you've put into it at that point. It'll still grow and still be invested in whatever you selected. You just can't add any new funds to that account. So after your working career, you could, in theory, have, you know, seven, eight, nine, four, one K plans, depending on how many times you've changed jobs. The next big difference between these two types of plans are contribution limits. IRAs definitely have much smaller contribution limits for 2022. The contribution limit is six thousand dollars, whereas for a 401k, it's twenty thousand five hundred dollars. So you can do an additional fourteen thousand five hundred dollars into these plans, uh, which is I mean, it's a significant difference. And this ties directly into Nicole's question, because these limits, although they are very different from each other, they do operate separately from each other. So if you have an IRA and a 401k plan, you can contribute in 2022 a total of $26,500. It doesn't matter that what you're contributing to one or the other, they keep track of those limits completely separate from each other. But do keep in mind though, if you have more than one IRA and you're contributing to both of them, the limit is still $6,000. You can't double up that number. You can't, just because you have two IRAs, you can't contribute $12,000. It's a total of $6,000 and the IRS will be keeping track of it. So uh, they will they will let you know if you put in more money than you should. So Nicole, I hope this answered your question. And for those of you out there listening, if you want to be like Nicole and have your question featured here on the podcast, you can always send me an email to questions at popcornfinance.com or just look for me on Instagram, look for Popcorn Finance Podcast, and you can send me a DM there. And before we get out of here, as promised, I'm going to announce the winners of the giveaway I announced uh, about a month ago. Uh, this was for a couple of copies of Tanya Hester's book, Wallet Activism. I was originally only going to give away two copies, but so many of you entered in and sent in such great emails that I'm going to double that number and give away four copies of Wallet Activism. Those winners are Nico, Johanna, Sean, and Aileen. So I will be following up with an email to all of you this week with details to get your information to get those books out to you. Thanks again to all of you who took the time to enter and send some really kind emails and hopefully I'll have another giveaway that I can announce uh, very soon and for those of you who haven't already checked out Tanya's book Wallet Activism I highly recommend it I finished it over the holiday break and there's some really great information on how to be more impactful with the decisions that we make with our money and just to be more intentional with what we do because we actually have a lot of power with the funds that we work very hard uh, each and every day to earn so uh, definitely go check out that book. I'll just throw a link in the show notes. If you do, if you want an easy way to go find it, just look in the show notes and uh, you'll be able to go grab a copy of Wallet Activism for yourself. As always, I appreciate you all joining me here for yet another bag of popcorn. I hope you have an amazing rest of your week and I'll talk to you soon. Your boy, keep it popping like Mary Poppins. <laughs>